Hello everybody, this time I have a little different video from usual. That's right, I'm going to rank every single robot released so far, including the new Shenlue. About the criteria and ranking rules first. The robots will be all be divided into their respective tiers. Tier 1 being grey, tier 2 is blue, tier 3 purple, and tier 4 yellow. The sections are marked in the description. So, the robot's ability, stats, balance, and legendary pilots will all have an effect in the ranking. If you do have any questions wanting to know more why I graded the robot as is, leave your question down below in the comment section. I read the comments many times per day, so you'll sure to get a reply. This video took me tons of time, so if you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you would like to me to make materialist of weapons, modules, titans, etc, leave me know. Phew, that was a long intro. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Tier 1 Robots Kicking things off, we're starting with no other than Destrier. Nothing special, the first robot of the game, C. Kozak, the most iconic robot in social media, and in the game it does well. Easy S. Gepard, weak but swift. I personally don't really like this robot, so E. Schütze, the only light robot with a heavy slot. If it just was still available, it would be better. D. GL Patton, four light weapons is a very nice firepower. B. Bolt, weak but capable of dodging single shots and cover distance fast. C. Gareth, his little shield is able to win you a duel or two, a great beacon runner. A. Jesse, just the worst GL button. D. Vityas, great firepower with decent mobility. B. Golem, the highest firepower out of tier 1 robots. Also a removed robot. C. Rogotka, the jump helps, but usually doesn't last a life long. Just use Griffin. E. Boa, slow and somewhat weak, but nice firepower. I get it why he was removed. D. Stalker. Another great beacon runner, stealth allows you to run through a war zone without getting hurt. A. Here's a full list of the robots. Pause here if you want. Tier 2 robots. Galahad. Very underrated robot, the shield is very strong and the firepower isn't bad. C. Natasha. Very slow, but HP and firepower carry Natasha to be the best brother out of tier robots. S. Butch. A very good sniper, easily accessible even in lower leagues. B. Doc. Firepower is nice, but durability is a big issue. E. Carnage. Used to rule the battlefields and still works okay. D. Rhino. A fast and heavy robot. Why is this used so little? C. Leo. Another strong brawler. It's really not difficult to guess what he gets. S. Hover. One of its kind. The flying ability is very handy in lower leagues, but the HP isn't very good. B. Lancelot. Strong fighter with a shield. It just somehow works. B. Alkin. It's weak and gets shot down very quickly. Just why does it cost 4000 gold? F. Kumiho. Speed is the key as always, and Kumiho really has a lot of it. A. Griffin. Damage, mobility, durability. No wonder why this is a classic. A tier is the only correct answer. Fujin. I really can't say anything bad about Fujin, but something just feels wrong. See it is. Rajin. He really had potential, but the lack of speed simply killed all the chances. D. Here's a full list of the robots. Pause here if you want. Tier 3 Robots Fury. Firepower is the only reason why Fury is somewhat useful. It lacks speed and defense, so I can't give it anything higher than C. Strider. It's okay only when it has abilities left. After that, it's a free kill, but it can make some good moves. D. Raven. Thanks to the Nessa pilot, Raven makes it to the S tier. The constant stealth is very useful, and if you use the jump unit at the same time as the ability, he can jump insanely high. Raker. Very rare to see these around anymore. The reason is because Raker doesn't have that much HP, nor firepower. The ability can actually be useful, but overall, the Raker doesn't work too well. D tier. Aguang. The defense is useful, but let's be real, would you actually use Aguang with the intention of winning a 1v1? C. Vulgasari. The overall durability is great, but the ability cooldown is too long, and the shield is very inconvenient. E. Haichi. Another case of too long ability cooldown. The shield is fine this time, but it seems to have cost a lot of HP. Another E. Hellburner. Hear me out, the Hellburner does a lot of damage, and the legendary pilot Oliver Song is actually very useful. Lack of better weapon slots prevents him from ranking higher, but I'm still giving him A. Cerberus. Fun to play, but realistically, the shield is weak, and the blackout doesn't include EMP. It's a fun troll, but just can't make it further than C tier. Inquisitor. The HP pool is surprisingly low, but the ability comes in handy with long stealth duration and medium cooldown. It's still very easy to outplay, so see it is. Falcon. 
the tank has robot of its tier. The traditional skill is very common to be used with Falcon, but then the firepower is only one heavy weapon. Still, a strong robot, A. Per sure. I mean, it's fast and all, but really, three light weapons is all he gets. Getting kills is not gonna be easy with this weak firepower. C. Spectre. Little longer cooldown and shorter stealth duration than Inquisitor, and despite very low HP, he gets C thanks to the firepower. For midi weapons is seriously something to watch out for. Mercury. Basically, just a better Inquisitor. Ability can be used actually for fighting, and this makes short range weapons useful for him to be. Nemesis. Now he's a good fighter, and because the absorber shield doesn't last long, enemies don't have time to retreat to cover. Firepower is kinda weak, and the rockets can be difficult to aim. A tier robot. Wayland. The healing is strong, but it's just not worth it because it forces you stationary and lures allies to camp even if they should make a move. E. Bulwark. Although old, the shields really are something. It works well as a tank for close range combat. Plus, I really love the idea that you have a physical shield in case someone has a shield breaker. B. Mender. There was an age when most Legend League players used Mender in their hangar because pair him with Mary Leclerc and repair amplifiers and you got an almost immortal robot. The legendary pilot is the reason why Mender scores no less than S tier. Well earned spot. Loki. Only useful in beacon modes, but the speed and constant stealth allow him to run beacons. Also, the very small size makes it difficult for tall robots to hit. Three light weapons won't deal a lot of damage, but he was never really meant for killing. B. Tier. The healing pattern is weird, and it's not a very good fighter either. It really sucks that you can't use all weapons while healing. C. Here's a full list of the robots. Pause here if you want. Tier 4 robots. Harpy. Still, even after over two years, this robot just works. The reflector is weaker than Siren's, but the ability is deadlier. C. Siren. The sister robot of Harpy, so pretty much the same things. Siren has a stronger reflector with a cost of less damaging ability. C as well. Typhon. Four medium weapons, a powerful ability, and good pilots all well done here. Hit points is the weakness once again, so C for the Typhon. Orochi. Old isn't always gold, like Orochi proves to be true. The ability nerf was so severe that it brought down the Orochi from among the best robots in the game. Now, it is ranked at tier E, which is a huge decline from before the nerf. Behemoth. Many players still prefer Behemoth over Crisis, simply because the durability is massive, and there's even a legendary pilot to boost the survivability further. Again, speed is the key, and Behemoth isn't really swift, so tier C is fitting for him. Demeter. The long absorber shield duration makes some players want to use the Demeter. And hey, it can also repair great damage with a legendary pilot. When piloted well, Demeter can actually make the difference between life and death in Titan fights. C. Invader. Tanky, old spider. Many prefer the ultimate invader simply because the invader has very weak firepower for tank. However, still the HP pool is incredible and can make some great moves. Although there's not very good legendary pilots for him. D. Blitz. He can perform strong attacks, but even with a legendary pilot, Blitz is just too flimsy to be good. He used to be the strongest bot in the game, but now there's so much stronger options that Blitz has just fallen off. So much so that he gets an E. Fenrir. One of the best tanks and overall robots in the whole game. Never been nerfed and the legendary pilot Bernadette Wolf is very strong. With the right equipment, Fenrir can pulverize anything. Easy choice, S tier. Hades. Hades is a kind of hit or miss. It can be strong in good conditions, or then it gets decimated by some well-planned attack. Only if the built-in cannon would have more range. C. Jaeger. Another robot that was a great idea on paper, but in practice absolutely sucks. Let me put it in this way. When have you last seen a Jaeger in a battle? The reason why not very many people use it is because it's just better to have 4 weapons instead of 2 and a crappy cannon. Clear F here. Scorpion. Scorpion has always been good. It's one of those rare robots that just never gets old. That's because every robot, without exceptions, are at their most vulnerable state when their ability is on cooldown. Scorpion can just teleport on them and take them down, no problems. Another clear STR robot. Arjun. Used to rule the skies. He was nerfed so hard that nobody used him anymore, and that's why he's kind of a forgotten robot. Even if the nerfs were cancelled, it would be somewhere around tier C, but in this state he gets an F. Ares. They're strong building weapons and long-lasting absorber shield pair into a very strong combination, but it doesn't take much to counter Ares. Underneath the strong shield lies a fragile robot, so Ares is nothing without its ability. That's why I think D is appropriate. Erebus. 
just a worse sniper than Behemoth or Crisis. The shield is weak and blackout is annoying. It's just, well, unpractical. D. Fafnir. Another used to be a good robot, and it can still be a hit or miss. If you manage to gather a ton of damage with a shield, it can work, but usually it's not worth it. D. Hawk. I really love the mechanic that the built-in weapon's damage depends on equipped weapons. Nowadays, the laser is so weak that it's not worth using even against titans anymore. E. Leech. This one requires skill, and if used properly, can really do something, but weak base HP is a huge issue. Reapers are very common, and they bypass leech's resistance entirely. Overall, I would say D. Nightingale. The healing is half the power of Mender's healing. There really is no point why this robot is in tier 4. F. Phantom. Fast, but not really worth using anymore. Scorpion just beats Phantom so easily. E. Ravana. Along the update 9.7, the Ravana can now remove rust effect when using its ability. This makes him one of the best counters to Ochikochi, and overall a great fighter. S. Shell. Slow, weak, and ability is kind of meh. Idea was good, and Shell used to be a strong bot, but nowadays it's pretty much a free kill. F tier. Kepri. All the bonuses and the 4 life weapons makes Kepri a decent fighter, and thanks to its healing and speed, it's an ideal robot for extermination. B. Revenant. An old tank. The ability to reduce the grey damage and have like a built-in anti-control is very useful. And he can teleport on enemies. Lack of speed and defense and realistically also firepower, however, make him rank at tier D. Skyrus. Thetis pilot is mandatory here, but with that said, he's a very tough and fast beacon capturer. Also, the firepower he carries is very good, and he comes with an Aegis shield. B. Seraph. Very weak after the nerf, but the only thing keeping him from dropping to F tier is the fact that the ability is somewhat useful in the first stages of extermination. E. Mars. First of its kind, but the nerf dropped Mars a little. The robot was never meta, and he was almost perfectly balanced. The nerf was also a little too much, and the turret is a little too weak now. Still, many players favor Mars as their favorite bot, since he's still a fun robot to play. I think I'll give him a C. Angler. The angler can win against weaker enemies. However, if the enemy has enough speed to run away, or enough health to outweigh the blind, the angler gets crushed quite fast. He does have a ton of health, and the ability can be used defensively to counter strong, long term attacks. The angler has been nerfed a total of 11 times, and is almost entirely dead by now. D. Nether. I wouldn't use the Nether anymore, especially after the force field nerf. He can dodge small bursts well, but the force field tricks you into taking larger bites than you can chew, by first feeling tanky, and then after the force field dies off, and the nether is left defenseless. D. Imugi. If played very strategically, Imugi can bring strong tanks along with him into the enemy territory and cause huge havoc that way. He also flies very fast and far with a short cooldown. The durability is nothing to brag about, but I think tier B is deserved here. Links. The force field pair with stealth and speed come together as a very powerful assassin. When well leveled, the executioner guarantees he kills, and therefore makes him a very strong bot in free for all modes. Again, the durability is a little bit of an issue, but he deserves a beat here. Crisis. Basically, a glass cannon version of Behemoth, but the shield breaker makes him significantly better as a sniper. Health isn't a huge issue from that distance. B it is for the Crisis. Ophian. He was used to be the strongest bot in the game, but the nerf killed him too. Still, it can deal a decent amount of damage and fly fast, so see it is. Ochikochi. Despite the nerf, still an overpowered robot. Being overpowered costs the S tier place, so A it is for him. Not that I would actually like the robot at all. Dagon. Fun, not as overpowered as Ochikochi, and actually useful and almost balanced. Keyword, almost. A. Kiri. Another fun robot, not too difficult to take down. The constant durability shifting does come with bugs, and that's why Kyuri also gets an A. Shenlu. I'm quite sure the shields are gonna be a problem, again, but probably nothing entirely game breaking, just an upgrade from Scorpion. One bad thing is that there's no option to teleport back before you jump on all three targets first. He isn't too tanky, so he gets an, you guessed it, A. So, that wraps it up for this time. Let me know your thoughts about the tier list in the comments. I know, I said this already, but this video really took a long time to make, so if you did find this video helpful, please leave a like, and if you really liked, drop a sub. That's it for this time, and I'll be sure to catch you in the next one. Bye!